catapult shot off an aircraft carrier, except it doesn't quit in a second and a half. It can go three times the speed of sound. We do it going straight up and accelerating the whole time until the, the rocket motor cuts off. Amazing view. And then you're just going to be instantly weightless crank ball floating in space, looking down at the Earth. That is the promise of space tourism and the race to make it a reality is well underway. I've always wanted to be an astronaut, and I got frustrated the fact that I couldn't go up on a NASA spaceship or a Russian spaceship, so decided to build a space line. That's when Virgin Galactic was born. It's no secret that you're one of several companies and billionaires looking to put regular people in space. Is Virgin Galactic going to be the first to pull it off? I'm pretty confident that um, before Christmas, Virgin Galactic will be the first to have um, people in the form of astronauts um, in space. I mean, astronauts are incredibly brave people, and obviously the first few flights are, are, are the dangerous ones. Mark Stuckey is one of those astronauts and serves as Galactic's lead test pilot. So when you get behind the wheel of the vehicle, how risky do you feel it is? I take it very seriously, but I don't feel like I'm flipping a coin on whether I'm gonna live or not. That's because engineers here at Galactic Spaceport in Mojave, California, have spent countless hours testing and improving this passenger vehicle, Spaceship Two. It's flown into the sky under the wing of this carrier aircraft, then detaches and blasts off into space for several minutes of weightlessness. Galactic's first few hundred customers have already paid around $250,000 to reserve a seat. Who are the future customers? Yeah. Um, because it is a pretty high price point. I actually think that the price will probably go up at the start, mm -hmm. um, just because uh, this is an expensive program. But then over time, long term, you'll see that price go down. And I think a really interesting analogy is, you know, the early days of commercial aviation. The first flights over the Atlantic actually cost like a real current year dollars, over $100,000. And now today I can buy a ticket on Virgin Atlantic for about 500 bucks. In recent years, Galactic and other private companies have emerged as leaders in manned space flight, as government agencies like NASA have shifted focus to deeper space exploration. Commercial activity is really good for efficiency, for innovation, for cost savings. The company is already eyeing ways to expand its services farther across the globe, with high-speed point-to-point travel, and even deeper into space. Potentially orbital flight or um, even uh, you know, staying a week on a space station or going around the moon or going you know, even further than that. Why should Virgin be in the business of space flight? Well, look, Virgin loves to take on seemingly insurmountable problems and try to overcome them. But new endeavors like these don't come without risk. In 2014, a pilot died in a test flight crash that also destroyed the spaceship. Do you ever wonder if this pursuit is irresponsibly risky? No great cause, no great movement, no great exploration comes without risk. That's how we, that's how we improve. What will it mean once space is opened to a larger population of people? You look at climate change or you look at certain peace and security issues, big challenges that we face as a people, as a nation, as a world are intrinsically planetary. And what I really hope, what, what I dream, is that by flying these people, these leaders, into space, that we can share with them a little bit of that planetary perspective. I think that's crucial to solving our biggest challenges. So I hope we can play a small part in that. Every single astronaut, that every single person I know who's been to space, um, says they, that you know, they're completely changed as a result, and so I'm looking forward to it. Oh, that is a million-dollar view out the window.